Okay, thank you very much. So good morning, everyone. My name is Alex Michael, a DevOps and Cloud Engineer. So um, for today's KD presentation, um, I'll be talking about Internet of Things. So um, Internet of Things is one of the latest um, technologies trending right, right now in the world. And um, none of us is new to the internet because without the knowledge of internet, we cannot be on Zoom. It's not possible for us to use um, platforms like on um, Slack or Google Meet, you know, and so many other um, platforms we use, which are online based. So um, right about now, I mentioned something earlier about Internet of Things um, being trending, and that is because a lot of automation is being done uh, right now. Uh, a lot of tasks are being um, processed in such a way that you don't need um, human intervention before they will actually be executed. And that is why um, we have um, fusing IT, such as uh, robotic process automation, which has to do with having um, processes being um, being executed and these processes we also have minimal um minimal downtimes or minimal mistakes or minimal uh, what's what will i use again minimal um inaccuracy you know so with all this the internet has actually helped us to also achieve this the internet has also said okay fine i don't want to be based only for browsing, only for people having to connect to each other, you know, as the internet also facilitates Facebook, facilitates uh, WhatsApp, making it work the way it does. Now, the internet has gone a lot more. The internet has said, okay, fine, I want to do more than just allowing one account to communicate with another or making a user communicate with a page or making one person to communicate with some other things. Rather, this time, I want machines communicating with each other. I want objects communicating with each other. I want um, household appliances communicating with each other. So for all this to happen, there must be a network. There must be a way in which a particular device will understand or can understand the other device and also give it functions for it to perform as we all know the internet is um is the internet is made up of different network in fact that is why it's called an internet meaning an inter an internet network is the shortened form that is called internet so when we call it internet network it means that there are a lot of networks connecting to each other just look at it this way we have, let's just say bank PHB, that is if they are still existing, bank PHB, uh, PHB having a network. And then we have another bank, Zenit, having another network. And we have another UBA bank having another network. Now, all these networks, they will all come together. And at the end of the day, they will still give reports to, uh, let me just say a CBN who might need one or two, uh, who might need one or two information from them. So, of course, these networks must be able to talk to each other. Let's look at BVN, for example. You know, you have a BVN, and that same BVN, you maybe, let me just say, that was issued to you from um, GT Bank. You find out that all across board, they all have it. So, all this happened because there is an internet. And then now, as I'm, uh, as I'm trying to explain that, it has gone beyond that now, but we want objects to be able to talk to each other. So that is the whole basis of internet. I could remember, uh, rather, inter internet of things. I could remember in those days, while growing up, watch movies, and then you see houses, you know, houses communicating with a particular, let me just say, particular, uh, what they call it now, let me, let me just say a jet or a jet from if you watch Batman. I would say Batman for, for instance, Batman as a movie, there's a lot of internet of things because you find out that his car 
can communicate with his gates. His gates can communicate with some things in his house and all that. And those days, we just watched it for fun. We didn't know that these things were actually real. Actually, those technologies they were showing us then was actually the future which we are living now. So I just wanted to give us a background of Internet of Things to make us, okay, know what it is. Yes, so many of us have heard about it, but we might not have an in-depth understanding of what inter uh, Internet of Things actually entails. So let me go right into the slide. But before I go into it, as you can see this diagram over here, you can see the world. And then in the world, what can you see? You can see this dish. So this dish is actually the one that is giving the signal. It's more like the internet. And with this diagram below, you can see a camera connected to a van, the van connected to this, you know, connected to security and logistics and to ATM cards and to authentications, a whole lot of things, even to this. I think if I can look at this diagram where it's looking like a, you know, all those um all those um doors used in entering the banks. So I want to believe this is it. So you can have, actually have many devices, very many devices that can talk to each other, that can share information. So what is Internet of Things? The Internet of Things connects ordinary objects to other objects and application is in the cloud. So it is not just uh, the objects alone that are communicating with each other. The truth is that they must have they must have a central point. They must have a place where they actually store data. They must have a place where they also get signals from, where they actually get um where they actually um get uh, how will I put it now, where their networks are being wired because you cannot actually start putting wires upon wires upon wires, gone are the days of using wires. Now everything is in the cloud. So you need to use something that, you know, is not physical and at the same time is very efficient and the cloud actually helps with that. So um, I mentioned earlier, the Internet of Things connects ordinary objects to other objects and applications in the cloud, making them intelligent and interactive. Such smart devices make our lives richer, healthier, and help to optimize the use of scarce resources. So for the fact that humans are not the ones actually um, carrying out tasks, it makes um, inaccuracy to, you know, to, to, to drop. It reduces mistakes and also increases efficiency. There's nothing like, okay, because I am too tired, that is why I was not able to do this, or that was why there was a downtime. There's nothing like that because the internet actually has taken control of that. It is the way you program it, that is the way it is going to, you know, give you its result. It is the way you put the networks together that, okay, uh, fan, you must only communicate to this table, it will not go more than that. It will only communicate exactly to that thing you have programmed it to communicate to. So that is how good the Internet of Things is. So what are some benefits of Internet of Things devices? IoT brings the smarts into the ordinary devices. Yes, just imagine, we always had the smartphone, right? We always had the phone and then all of a sudden you find out that your phone is not just for calling. Your phone can be for owning your TV. How good is it? Or your, your watch, you have a watch and your watch, you can use it. Maybe someone is at the door. You don't need to stand up. You just need to click a button on your, on your, um, on your watch and then it opens the door. Or you speak to your watch and then the, doors open, or the door opens just immediately. So, you know, that is how cool it is. That is how fanciable this technology is. It brings out the, 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 it brings out the beauty in technology. It makes things easy. So at home, your ordinary wristwatch now becomes a smartwatch. Serial speakers are now smart speakers. The TV is a smart TV. The car is a self-driving smart car. So we already have all these things playing out. We see all these things. Though fine in Nigeria, 
I personally have not seen a car driving itself. We still do it manually. But at least from what I've seen on the internet, on TV, yes, these things are happening. And you find out that the owner does not, all what he just needs to do is tell the car, take me to this particular location. It has all the GPS, it has everything on ground. So all what he just needs to do is just to convey the passenger or the owner of the car to that destination with little or no stress of having to twist your hand because you want to hold the steering and all that. So, and the days of smart refrigerators and smart toaster are upon us already. So now it's not just um, cars, it's not just TV, even to kitchen, um, even to kitchen appliances, to kitchen equipment. So that means we don't even need to even do much. Everything is easy. You don't stress yourself. You don't sweat and all that. So what is the role of uh, Internet of Things, which is IoT, in the industrial operations? So IoT, I've been giving, um, I've been giving examples on domestic. Um, let me just say, I've been giving domestic examples. I've been giving you know, examples about furniture, watch, and all that. But it does not just end there. Even in the industries, it plays a huge role. It plays a huge role. Just wonder why you find out that countries like Germany, countries like America, even uh, Russia, even though fine, it's behaving the way it's behaving now, um, it's still, these countries actually utilize this technology and that is why they are able to produce faster than normal, faster than they, sh they should and even better. So you might ask yourself, okay, well, I wanted to uh, ask something, but maybe later I'm going to ask that question. So, um, so what are the roles of um, IoT in the industrial operations? The first one, let's look at manufacturing. Manufacturers are rapidly, rapidly digitizing their plants operations and deploying new IoT devices at a large scale. Use cases of manufacturing include tracking of materials, industrial automations with mobile robots and autonomous vehicles and better connecting the workforce. So um, I have a background at least in the manufacturing sector and um, I could remember then in the factory, you see tomato, produ uh, tomato paste uh, producing um, company, Gino to be precise. And then we have the we have a room where um, the blending of the tomatoes and water and some other some other ingredients where it happens. Then we have the machine. Then we have a conveyor. Then we have a coolant. Then we have a place for sorting and packing. Then we have a place more like a, a rack. I've forgotten the name they call it. It's, it's a rack, but stands on a pallet, and then they have to arrange the finished. Um, products in it and all that. Now, all these long processes I've mentioned require a lot of people working on them. Requires a lot of people actually, and just aside from that, the training that these people have to go through, you know, because nobody actually has that knowledge of this is how to produce tomato paste. Nobody is coming with that knowledge. So of course, when they come in, it is in that place right there and then you have to start training. That is a cost of its own. Then of course, this operations taking a lot of time. Sometimes you find out that the tomato is not red today. It is yellow or it is this thing. They, they have to go back, start checking um, so many chemical properties and seeing if the uh, mixing was uh, was done enough and all that. And to correct these things takes a real lot of time. But just look at it, what Internet of Things is now bringing. Internet of Things is now saying, okay, fine. You don't need to have so many workers doing all this. And you don't need to start having, today you are having red color. Tomorrow you're having bricks color. Next morning you're having maybe a pink color. You don't need all those. All what you just need to do is that, okay, fine. Tell the machines, this is what you should do. This is what you should do. This is what you should do. Now, immediately the blending as um, the blending operation has been carried out. It automatically sends it. Now, this automation will be done maybe through Wi-Fi, you know, or it can be through Bluetooth or it could be anything because of course, what is our Wi-Fi and Bluetooth for? It's for connecting devices, nothing more than that. So you are, through your Wi-Fi, you are telling your um, telling your blender that when you are through blending, send it to this. And through your Wi-Fi, you are telling the blender to 
blend at this particular proportion or at this particular ratio for each of these ingredients. So there will be there, there will be uniformity. Not today, it is this, tomorrow it is that. There will be there will be uh, there's a word they use in um, food, which is um, homogeneous. It will be it will be constant. So use cases of manufacturing include uh, tracking of materials. So I've talked about that. And even not just within the, um, the, 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 the manufacturing plant, but even outside. We have vehicles that are also conveying these finished products to the market and all that. So, of course, just imagine we talked about a car the other time. So just imagine you don't actually need a driver to be driving the, the, the truck to the market or to the distributor. Rather, we are just having a we are just having to tell the give some commands to the to the to the truck, take it to this so 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 place, and it delivers it safely. So that is how good it is in the manufacturing sector. Then we have utilities. Now, for those that don't know what utility is, yes, we really do not use a lot of utility in our domestic homes. So some people might not know what utility is. But in the manufacturing sector, they use utilities a whole lot. Without utilities, it's not possible for them to do a lot of production. Now, utility is... Whenever you see maybe just say pressure passing through a pipe, hot water passing through a pipe, there's a pipe here passing cold water, there's a pipe here passing hot water. Let me just let me just say there's another pipe passing a chemical. Now, all these all these um different cold water, hot water, chemical, they all have different temperatures. So the utility actually helps in regulating all these materials. Materials, not in the sense of uh, manufacturing that I was talking about, like the finished products. I'm, no, I'm not talking about that. All this I'm talking about is maybe them just say oxygen, them just say nitrogen, you know, and some other, and even water too, since it is H2O, and even water. So we are having different of these pi uh, different pipes. And then how can you regulate? Okay, I want it to be at a temperature of 10 degrees always. I want my nitrogen that after every 15 minutes, it stops so that some processes can uh, happen and then it turns back on after 15, 10 minutes and then it continues and then stops again and waits for some operations to, to go on. So all these things, you can actually give these commands, you can give these instructions using IoT that, okay, fine, Mr. Pipe, Discuss with your regulator. Let's just say it's a it's a circle regulator and say, okay, regulator on at this so-so time and off at this so so time. That is how easy it is. So you don't need someone to sit down there watching it, regulating it up and down. And of course, I've talked about mistakes. Sometimes what if the person is tired? What if the person goes for a break? Or let's look at security too, you know. At one point or the other, the person has to leave the place. At that point, when he leaves that, he leaves the station, what happens? Something can go wrong. So with all this, I would say Internet of Things have only come to better the, the operations in the manufacturing industry and also in utilities. So um, in order to deliver reliable, safer, and more efficient delivery of power, utilities are modernizing the grid. Okay, I talked about pipes. I even forgot that our power holding is also a utility zone. So utilities are modernizing the grid, automating their substations and distributing distribution of networks, and merging renewable energy sources with traditional ones. So that is what uh, Internet of Things is doing. Just imagine our PHCN, you know, it's using Internet of Things. Well, we are we are not there yet, and I pray we get there. Things will be easier. It will be easier. And you might look at it with a lot of people you know, get fired and they won't have a job. Well, we will talk about that later. So we also have we also have in the roadways too. In the roadways, you might look how can Internet of Things help in you know in traffic? How can it help in you know um safe driving and all that? Yes, it actually does. Just imagine from this image you have here now, you have a car with his Wi-Fi on, you have another car with his Wi-Fi on. Now, 
Internet of Things can actually tell this other car, assuming these two cars are automated cars, like they are moving on their own. This car can communicate to this car that come, I'm at this social so distance with you. Don't move closer than this particular. In fact, there will be very, very minimal, um, there will be, there will be very minimal forms of road accidents. Because, you know, the reason for road accidents most times is because people are not patient, people want to be in a hurry, people want to beat queues, people want to do a lot of things. That's the reason. It's, in fact, all, it's not, majorly it's not even the roads. A place like Lagos, Lagos has a good highway. Like the highway is free. I would say the roads are good. However, the, 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 the holdups are endless. So why is that? It's because there are people who are always beating traffic. There are people who are always going against traffic. And then because of the um, insensitivity of one and the impatience of one person, a lot of travelers will also you know, pay for it. So, but just look at it, assuming we have two automated cars, or let's just say, even if they even have drivers in them, but these two cars are able to communicate. Driver A is able to communicate with driver B, or his car is able to communicate with the other car. By the time it reaches a particular distance, let's just say distance from each other, let's just say the, the car vibrates. Then the driver knows that, okay, fine, we are getting too close to each other. What happens? It stays on lane. I don't know, maybe it was on KDO. I don't know where I heard it, but I can't remember where I heard it from. That uh, in the European road, though, I, I want to believe it's some of the roads. If you are going off your lane, the car will, you know, it's going to vibrate and you have to come back to your lane. So that is how good it is. In that kind of situation, it will be very difficult for you to start going off, you know, when they say 60 kilometers per hour. By the time you start going more than 60, let me just say you go to 70 kilometers per hour, your car will start vibrating, except you know that you want to, you want your car vibrating till you get to your destination. That is when you continue on 70 kilometers per hour. But for your comfort, of course, you come back to your 60 kilometers per hour or less. So that is how how um, Internet of Things has come to make even roadways even easier for us to apply. And aside from that, making it safer. So from the slide over here, road authorities are increasingly relying on IoT solutions to improve safety, reduce congestion, and allow carbon emission too. Oh, that's true. That's true. So why just look at it when you know we are on hold or you are on traffic can you imagine the number of cars you know emitting uh, co which is uh, carbon monoxide we are having a lot of cars emitting them at the same time in fact i would say the the the, the emission from these cars is even more than that of some industries because of traffic just imagine because of iot there's law and order on the road and all that and then there's always free movement and then for these reasons, we are not having a car staying in this particular spot for three hours, four hours on the third Milan bridge. And then, you know, it's going to make the air safer. It will make us safer too. Like it will make us breathe good air. So it increases video surveillance. It makes road signs dynamic. Okay, now I didn't talk about the part of road signs because if you can look at this diagram over here, if you can see my mouse, if you can look at this diagram here, now, this car communicating with this car at the same time is also communicating with the road signs. So just look at your traffic light, re uh, traffic light red, yellow, and green, you know, zero, orange, and green. Now look at the traffic light. Immediately it says red. The car will, will obey that particular instruction automatically. And even if it does not even obey automatically, if you are the driver you know, at the back seat, you will get a signal that you should stop at that time. So that is how good it is. And also from my slide over here, it says, and investing in automated two bots. So these two bots we are talking about is, of course, is, a, is what actually makes them to communicate with each other. So we have enterprise as one of the, um, as one of the industrial operations that uh, IoT has also helped us to improve. An enterprise, for instance, is even being come, 
you know, any place where we do business, that is an enterprise. So right about now we have, you know, applications, we have web applications, we have different things right now. And just imagine from your web application, you are able to uh, you are able to manage security you are able to manage users you are able to manage other devices that are allowed to connect to that to that your application you are able to do so many things manage staff you know just imagine you have a company and because of just only one application you are able to manage the whole aside from the building itself, you are able to manage the people, you are able to manage the resources in it. And how will this be able to happen with IoT? It is only when all devices within that particular, uh, within that particular system or that particular company are able to communicate with each other, are able to send messages to each other, each other. Because as for people, yes, it might not be able to manage the people, telling them, hey, you, you have to work on uh, SL DevOps, or you have to work on this particular project. It might not be able to open its mouth and tell you no, but you know, just like as we know, apps are, are built to also generate information and to store information. From those informations, or rather, information does not have a plural. Uh, so, from those information that you've been able to gather, or should I say, your computer has been able to gather. It is able to dictate, okay, fine. This is the best person for this particular role. This is the best person for this particular role. And then sends this message, let, let me just say to HRPC, with little or no stress at all. You don't, in fact, you might not even need to even type anything. It will do it on its own. Why? Because both devices are connected to each other. They are working as a network. So um, as I round up, we also have um, terminal operators and ports. So just imagine in a place like Lagos where we have a Tinkan Island or in a place like Portacourt where we have a lot of, or in a place like Portacourt where we have a lot of sea ports and all that, Internet of Things can actually help in, okay, traffic because of course this, there are a lot of, um, well, I, let me remember the name of, there's this um, truck they use, it's a crane. It has a crane. I, I can't remember the, the name of the truck. So, you know, it carries the uh, loads and all that. And of course, there are a lot of people that actually monitor traffic. There are a lot of people that also, also say, okay, fine. This, um, this particular truck, it's not a truck. I can't remember the name again. It's for carrying loads. So there's this, uh, it says, okay, fine. This particular uh, automobile cannot carry more than let's just say 150 kg or 10,000 kg, it cannot carry more than this load. All those things will not be needed anymore because internet of things would have already allowed each and every um, each and every automobile within that space uh, to be able to know which of these loads they are able to carry. If it's, can, if it's carrying more than what it should, maybe it will just stop or there will be an instruction given to it that, will allow the um, person operating it to know that come or this is not the right um, thing you are doing. You have to go for the specification. Then we have smart cities. Smart cities, you know, just imagine you are in a city and then in that city, cars can communicate with houses, houses can communicate with filling stations, filling stations can communicate with, um, with, uh, let me just say, with traffic and with, uh, with traffic light radar and with so many other things, you find out that in that type of city, there will be orderliness because everything will be done according to book. And of course, when you are feeding these appliances or feeding these um, machines instruction, you are giving them instruction based on guidelines, based on specifications for that city. So of course, everything will be fine, everything will be safe. Just imagine you are going to school, I know, and it's easy for you to just get there through the use of a, an automated car. And these schools are directly linked to a library. And this library also have a connection with a waste management. And this waste management have a connection with supply and even utilities and all that. It will be really cool. So in summary, the internet of things, which is the IoT, describes the physical objects or group of 
of objects with sensors, processing ability, software, and other technologies to connect and exchange data with each with other devices and systems over the internet or other communication networks. So this is actually the definition of Internet of Things that was given by Wikipedia. In other words, you can just say, you know, one object or the other, one object or uh, device or the other, communicating with other devices through a network. And this network, of course, is the internet. So this is where I will be stopping my presentation. I don't know if there is room for questions because what I'm saying, I only have two minutes more before we end it. So if there are any questions, and if there are no questions, I have a question, and then we can call it a thing. Yeah, Alex, thank you very much. I really enjoyed it because I actually followed the show. And I'll say thank you very much for talking about IoT. But then I noticed one thing. You've been praising IoT, praising, 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 praising. Mm -hmm. And you've not got IoT. I mean, I want to know if there's an advantage to IoT. You should in touch. Okay. That's my question. Okay. So uh, one of the... um challenges, let me just say challenges of IoT is that we talked about people actually giving because it, it can't it can't actually work. Like it can't it can't build by itself. Somebody has to build it. Right. Now what if the person also gives a wrong information like feeds it the wrong information that is one it will continue to do that wrong thing until when another person is able to spot it or when they are able to change it. That is one. The second thing is that it is also um, prone to cybersecurity attacks. You know, today it's fine. Tomorrow, another person can hijack, can hijack it just like answers where who loves hijacked what is not meant to be. So another person can hijack it and then turn that. Just imagine somebody having access to a city through his IoT. In fact, that city is in the control of just only one man. That is what it means. And then just, let's take, for example, electronic voting too. Just for this, somebody from somewhere, a Russia or a Germany can just take control of another country's voting system. So these are one of the you know, setbacks of IoT. Yes, it is not perfect, perfect, but I will still say that this is the human side of it. The human side of it is still the reason why they are setbacks, but they can't create themselves. People have to do that. Okay. Uh, it's not that I know, but then I'll just accept it. Because I don't believe that there, there isn't any uh, setback to technology or IOC, but then that's a story for another day. Okay. Are there mm. any other questions that we can wrap yeah. up? Yeah, Michael, Abiy, Alex. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I really appreciate your um, your uh, Eastern, your contribution to this uh, Internet of, of Things. But my question is that, uh, because it seems like you know much about this Internet of Things and the uh, smart kitchen, smart tools, smart everything that we have now. But I wanted to ask, uh, with the way we are going now, how safe are we as women? Because now we have, um, I just want to hear, uh, at least see, hear your perception about this. So now we have uh, reproductive um, robots that can do everything, wow. everything we, we women can do. You understand? But I know it's, uh, it's programmed by women. It can also be managed by women, but do you, I wanted to, you to understand the fact that now we can program a, a, a robot or anything now to produce something the way we wanted. So I don't know, sometimes I feel concerned and I begin to like make some research and begin to worry about the whole thing and possibly imagine all sorts of, all sorts of things and all that. So I just want to hear your view on it. Okay. Um, you know, I, I watch a lot of movies and I believe in fictions, at least to a very good extent. What looks like a rumor, just, what just looks like something that they, let me just rush because of time, we are supposed to be in stand-up. So um, what you watch on movies, at the end of the day, 
comes out to be something true. Let's look at the coronavirus, for example. We've watched Resident Evil, which was uh, Island of the Dead. We've watched so many, many movies. And all of a sudden, is it a quarantine that was, uh, was adopted in those movies? At the end of the day, it came true. Now, we've also watched things like iRobot. We've watched some other you know, movies where robots actually took over the world. These are the things. Wait, These uh, are Alex. Hello? Wait. I, I don't want you. I don't want you to see that way. We are not okay. talking about movie. This is no, what no. Is, this is our it reality is, now. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually linking it to this reality. Our, this is our reality. Yeah, I'm linking to reality now. Okay. Now I want to tell you something that in those movies, there is some part. There is some, some part of it that is true. Now look at it. Human error. The fact that you are making sure that that robot is the one that will produce something, it can actually be very smart. Trust me, do you know how much, even just our applications, how much information they generate every day? Not to talk of, you are having a robot that's actually processing. You're having a robot that is reproducing. You're having a robot that is doing virtually everything that a human does. And do you know how smart a human is? Now, what is the reason why, for example, a human cannot be trusted? It is because humans are smart. Humans can improvise. They can transform. Look at I it in that sense that the robot doing the, that. Yeah, so I'm not trying to say any, uh, I'm not trying to give any prophecy of doom, but I'm just to trying to tell you that robots, as long as you are giving them that yeah, room like, uh, for them to produce yeah. and also to do things that humans can do, there's a very high yeah, tendency. Wow. There's a very high I mean, tendency I mean, that I things mean, can I also mean, go wrong. Do you know why? Because humans are still the ones feeding them with information. There's nothing wrong with the process. But the people that actually do it, that was, let me connect it with the question that um, Patrick also asked. Yes, there's nothing wrong with Internet of Things. There's no uh, downtime per se. However, for the fact that humans are still the one that we have to create it, that is where the problem is. But it can't create itself. So that is where I can actually answer your question. They will continue to be smart. All right, Alex. All right, thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for the wonderful question. Alex, because of our time at this point, I'm not too early. Thank you. All right, um, thank you very much. Thank you for um, actually bringing us out today. Thank you for talking about IoT. Um, everybody, thank you for joining today's case section. We'll be tomorrow. Thank you. Have a lovely one. All right, thank you very much.